Welcome, brothers and sisters, to another episode of God's Glory and His Story. I'm your host, MC Enemy, but it's not about me. It's about the Word of God and His truth on this channel. Remember the prayer of Paul to the Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16 through 21. If you read it, it will bless you with understanding of God's Word and His love for you. If you haven't done so yet, new to this channel, we ask that you download at least two Bible apps, and we ask that you make one of them the 1611 King James Bible with the Apocrypha. And the reasons right there in the middle of your screen is the facts of every case must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. All right, the name of this episode is If Loving You Is Wrong, I Don't Want to Be Right. And as a subtitle, we're going to be introducing you to the prequels of Daniel. So we grew up believing that we were Gentiles, but yet we still love the Father. We grew up seeing images of Yahshua Jesus that don't look like us, yet we still love Jesus. You are the descendants of the children of the book. Now, I'm sure many of you are going to say, how can I be so sure? Scripture, scripture, scripture. And I'm going to introduce you to the book of Shoshana. And I got an asterisk next to it. Because if you look for it, you're not going to find it. Because it's not named Shoshana, first of all. Shoshana is the Hebrew name of what the book is currently named, Susanna. And that book, Susanna, is your, you're only going to find in your 1611 King James Bible with the Apocrypha. So if you've been following along and you've downloaded that book, hopefully you're going to follow along with the story. I mean... Many of us read books because we're looking for drama, we're looking for lies, scandal, sexual perverts. Well, this you can't say the Bible's uh, boring anymore because this particular book has all that and a bag of chips, as we used to say. I mean, there's all types of drama throughout this Bible, so you can't say it's boring. You just gotta you just gotta read it and find the places that are interesting. These are historical stories. These are not just, you know, fictional. These are your history. So this story uh, is going to start with a, it's a man named Joachim. And you can see his Hebrew name on the screen there, Joachim, Yehoakim. And his name means in Hebrew, raised by God. And Susanna is his wife. Her name, Hebrew name, is Shoshana. And Shoshana means lily, the flower lily. So I'm going to read you some of this story because it's, um, like I said, it's only one chapter. So I'm going to set the stage and, and read a little bit for you. It's too much for me to actually put on the screen. But like I said, I want you to go and follow along yourself. The Book of Susanna, it's only one chapter. It reads, there dwelt a man in Babylon called Joachim and he took a wife whose name was Susanna, the daughter of Chelsius, a very fair woman and one that feared the Lord. Her parents were also righteous and taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. 
Now, Joachim was a great rich man and had a fair garden joining unto his house. And to him resorted the Yahoos because he was more honorable than all others. The same year appointed two of the ancients of the people to be judges, such as the Lord spake of, that wickedness came from Babylon from ancient judges who seemed to govern the people. These kept, as, kept much at Joachim's house and all that had any suits in law came unto them. Now, when the people departed away at noon, Susanna went into her husband's garden to walk. And the two elders saw her going in every day and walking so that their lust was inflamed towards her. And they perverted their own mind and turned away their eyes that they might not look unto heaven nor remember just judgments. Skipping down a little bit further, yet they watched diligently from day to day to see her. And one said to the other, let's go now home for it is dinner time. So when they were gone out, they parted one from another and turning back again came unto the same place. And after that, they had asked one another the cause. They acknowledged their lust. Then appointed they a time both together when they might find her alone. And as it fell out as they watched a fit time, she went in as before with two maids only, and she was desirous to wash herself in the garden, for it was hot. And there was nobody there save the two elders that had hid themselves and watched her. Then they said unto her maid, then she said unto her maids, bring me oil and washing bowls and shut the garden doors that I may wash me. And they did as she bade them and shut the garden doors and went out themselves at privy doors to fetch the things that she had commanded them. But they saw not the elders because they were hid. Now when the maids were gone forth, the two elders rose up and ran unto her saying, behold, the garden doors are shut that no man can see us and we are in love with thee. Therefore consent unto us and lie with us. If thou will not, we will bear witness against thee that a young man was with thee and therefore thou didst send away thy maids from thee. Then Susanna sighed and said, I am straightened on every side. For if I do this thing, it is death unto me. And if I do not do it, I cannot escape your hands. It is better for me to fall into your hands and not do it than to sin in the sight of the Lord. With that, Susanna cried out with a loud voice and the two elders cried out against her. Then ran the one and opened the garden door. So when the servants of the house heard the cry in the garden, they rushed in at the privy door to see what was done unto her. But when the elders had declared their matter, the servants were greatly ashamed, for there was never such a report made about Shoshana. And when it came to pass the next day, when the people were assembled to her husband Joachim, the two elders came also full of mischievous imagination against Shoshana to put her to death and said before the people, send for Shoshana, the daughter of Chelsea, Joachim's wife. And so they sent. So she came with her father and mother, her children and all her kindred. Now Shoshana was a very delicate woman and beauteous to behold. And these men, these wicked men, commanded to her to uncover her face that they might be filled with her beauty. Therefore her friends and all that saw her wept. Then the two elders stood up 
in the midst of the people and laid their hands upon her head. And she weeping looked up towards heaven for her heart trusted in the Lord. And the elders said, as we walked in the garden alone, this woman came in with two maids and shut the garden doors and sent the maids away. Then a young man who was hid came unto her and lied with her. Then we that stood in the corner of the garden, seeing this wickedness, ran unto them. And when we saw them together, the man we could not hold, for he was stronger than we, and opened the door and leapt out. But having taken this woman, we asked who was who the young man was, but she would not tell us these things we do testify. Then the assembly believed them as though they were the elders and judges of the people. So they condemned her to death. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, O oh, everlasting God, thou knowest the secrets and knowest all things before they be. Thou knowest that they have borne false witness against me, and behold, I must die. Whereas I never did such things as these men have maliciously invented against me. And the, and the Lord heard her voice. And now on the screen, here it is where I wanted to, you to see. And therefore, when she was led to be put to death, the Lord raised up the Holy Spirit of a young man whose name was Daniel, who cried out with a loud voice, I am clear from the blood of this woman. Then all the people turned them towards him and said, what mean these words that thou hast spoken? So he stood, so he standing in the midst of them said, are ye such fools, ye sons of Israel, that without examination or knowledge of truth, ye have condemned the daughter of Israel? Return again to the place of judgment, for they have borne false witness against her. Now I'm going to stop right there and just put in a, as a note on the bottom that Daniel, the name Daniel means to judge, and then L is God. So we would say God to judge. Just found that to be an interesting fact, but I'm actually going to leave the story here. So hopefully I got your juices wet and you want to know what happened. But now you're going to have to go and download and read the book of Susanna, which is also her Hebrew name is Shoshana. Read it for yourself. The other book that is an uh, introduction to Daniel is called Bell and the Dragon, which is also in the Apocrypha, the 1611 King James Bible. This particular book elevates Daniel in the sight of the king of Babylon. And it too is only one chapter. This sets Daniel to go on to become one of the greatest prophets of all time. So hopefully you go and read it. And if you do go read it, I want you to drop me a line in the comments to let me know that you read it. And while you're at it, go ahead and click subscribe. Please, we need more subscribers. We need to get this word out. But when you drop that line in the comments, just don't give away the ending. Just tell us that you read it and give us your reaction. You like the story, wow, incredible, whatever it is you have to say, just don't give away the ending and let us know that you read the rest of the story. All right, so let's look at some scriptures that further the case that we are Yehudi. New Living Translation, John chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. It is written, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. That's Jesus speaking about the Holy Spirit. 
is the spirit of truth. So only the Holy Spirit can tell you who you are, without a doubt. And if you're watching this, he's already inside of you. But you must activate him. How do you do that? I'm glad you asked. It's simple. Read your history. Read the Bible and pray for understanding. That will activate that Holy Spirit. New Living Translation, James chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. It is written, so humble yourselves before, the, before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. For purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Now, I personally have gotten a closer relationship with our Heavenly Father now. And anything that truly, and the key word here is truly, that brings you closer to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and him closer to you, cannot be a bad thing. There's no darkness in the Father. He's only going to come closer to you when you come closer to him through Jesus with that spirit of truth. New Living Translation, Romans chapter eight, verses 28 through 30. It is written, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. So you're on this journey for a reason. He has called you into his marvelous light. To hear him clearer, read his word, read your history, read the Bible. They're all the same thing. Sixteen eleven King James Bible, New Living, oh, excuse me, New Living Translation, John chapter one, verses ten through thirteen. It is written, "He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become." children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. Notice that it said, but to all who believe. So I want you to imagine you're on an all-inclusive Caribbean vacation when you receive a call that your child will die without a blood transfusion and you're the only match to be found in time, what do you do? Of course, you're gonna drop everything and catch the next thing smoking, flying back to your home so that you can provide what your child needs. Now, can you see how much God loves you? I sure hope so, brothers and sisters. 1611 King James Bible, Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall, not, shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken 
and shall he not make it good? Trust God, not man. If he tells you that you are bloodline Yehudi, that should settle it for you. So don't let what I say or what I believe or anyone else believe influence you. It's your salvation and you are responsible for your own salvation. God has already told, told you who you are, but you have to read your history, which is the Bible, to find out. And then that Holy Spirit will reveal interpretations and understanding to you. Holy Spirit is not going to lie to you. God's not a liar. He's not a man. 1611 King James Bible, Matthew chapter 5, verse 20 through 22. It is written, For I say unto you, that except your righteousness, actually, excuse me, this is only going to be verse 20. So Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. And I mentioned this before last week, but I got brought off into a different area. So, but this part of it does work with this story. So Matthew chapter 5, verse 20, it is written, For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So that's Jesus talking about the scribes and the Pharisees. So what's a scribe? A scribe is a person who serves as a professional copyist especially one who's, who makes copies of manuscripts before the invention of automatic printing. And just as a note, look above, you can see that these scribes are swarthy people on a, on a, in the middle and on the right. People of color. And what's a Pharisee? So Pharisees was a member of an ancient Jewish sect distinguished by strict observance of the traditional and written law and commonly held to have pretentious to superior sanctity, a self-righteous person, a hypocrite. And we talked about hypocrites and Jesus had much to say about that a few episodes back. So if you, unless you're more righteous than a scribe and the Pharisees, you're not gonna get into the kingdom. Now, the scribes are the one who took the scrolls and transcribed them to write future versions. Why? What makes the scribes not, not righteous? Well, they were just following the orders of the Pharisees, the interpretations of the, the Pharisees. So you get a bad interpretation in, you get a bad interpretation out. And some of the scribes probably knew that they, they, what they were receiving as the interpretation wasn't right, but they just followed their orders. Sixteen eleven King James Bible, John chapter eight, verses thirty one through thirty three. It is written. Then said Jesus to those Yahudi which believed on him. If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free. Now, I've never felt so free in my life, brothers and sisters, coming into this realization of who we are. I'm, I'm free from the mental bondage of the enemy's deception. And it's my hope that y'all continue to rock with me until the Holy Spirit tells you the same. But I want you to notice 
that passage of scripture. They said the seed of Abraham and were never in bondage. Meaning that they can only be of Ishmael, Esau, or the sons of Keturah. Because we know Israel, the sons of Israel went through many captivities and they are the people, the chosen people of the book. So the religious leaders were not of Israel. They were not descendants of Jacob. And just as a reference, you can go back and look at episode 17. It's called Israel, you are not the father. We went over some of that information there in case you're interested in following up on it. And did I mention you have to read the Bible? Read your history. All right, brothers and sisters, remember to capture Christ at 1234 Eastern Standard Time, a.m. and p.m. Kumbaya is about us speaking with one voice. You can catch me on Facebook, Hebrew Connect TV. If you like this episode, please click the thumbs up and share it with others. You can send me an email right there in the middle of the screen. And I, I definitely implore you guys to drop a line in the comment. Let me know that you read the rest of the story of Shoshana. All right, brothers and sisters, as always, worship the Father, praise the Son, and accept the Holy Spirit. Y'all be blessed. Until next time, shalom, peace.